All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about MC Sports. MC Sports was a sporting goods store primarily located in the Midwest. I would put them in the same category as a Dunham's or a Dick's Sporting Goods. At their peak, they would have 78 locations. They were located in Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Missouri, and Iowa. This company would be a major player in the industry and they would thrive throughout the 80s and 90s. That is, before they fell on hard times in the mid to late 2000s. Originally called the Sterling Clothing Company, this first location would open in Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1946. It was owned by Jack and Genevieve Finkelstein. Hope I'm saying that right. This first location would primarily sell men's clothing, but they also had other things such as military surplus and specialty items. This first store would operate in its current state until their kids took over in 1961. That year, they would make a major shift by selling sporting goods equipment, and they would officially change the name to MC Sports. Throughout the years, this new store concept would prove to be successful, and they would look to expand in the following decades. And they would do just that in 1986. They would acquire a few smaller stores, taking their total locations to 26. However, this would mark the end of the Finkelstein's involvement with the company. They would go on to sell it, the California-based company Thrifty Corp. That was also in 1986. Thrifty Corp. owned several other retail stores, and they were interested in expanding MC Sports. And they would do just that in 1987. They would open three new locations in Ohio. In the following year, they would expand even more by acquiring Brown Sporting Goods, this would add 20 new locations in Indiana and Illinois. By the early 90s, they would be ranked the 13th largest sporting goods retailer, bringing in an estimated $150 million annually. Throughout the 90s, this company would just continue to expand, and it was mostly by acquisition. They would add new locations in Missouri and Kansas, bringing their total store count to 77. In 1992, they would build a 100,000 square foot warehouse. It was located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. After acquiring all these stores and building a new warehouse, MC Sports was struggling to make a profit. And later in 1992, the company would end up being sold for just $275 million. The buyer would be Leonard Green and Partners. Under the new ownership, MC Sports would focus on improving customer service. On top of that, they would be adding new products. All this was done to stand out from their competition. In 1993, they would close nine underperforming stores. They were mostly in the St. Louis area. But oddly, they would start opening new locations in the Chicago area. In 1994, their flagship location in Grand Rapids, Michigan would act as a prototype store. They would be adding new items, upgrading to video displays, and even added an in-store gym. This prototype would prove to be successful, and it would be rolled out to other locations the following year. By 1995, they would have 72 locations, and just a year later, they would add six more, bringing their store count to 78. In 1997, they would purchase a fishing store called Traverse Bay Tackle. This location was in Traverse, Michigan. With this purchase, they saw yet another opportunity to create a prototype store. This new concept would be something like a Bass Pro Shop or a Cabela's. It would prominently feature fishing and hunting gear. They would pair that with a 44,000 square foot sporting goods store. However, this new concept never really got off the ground. I also wanted to mention around this time, MC Sports would do a lot of good with charity. Most notably, their work with Children's Miracle Network. They would often give a percentage of their sales to the cause. So, kudos to them. Anyways, by 1998, profits were starting to dwindle. And once again, MC Sports was looking to make some modifications. They would cut down on inventory, and they would make an attempt to lower their overhead costs by reducing the overall store size. None of this would stop them from making big plans. They were looking to expand with several new locations in Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and North Carolina. However, this would never happen. 
By 1999, store sales fell even further. This time, they would look to close underperforming locations. Now, with just 65 stores, they would look to sell products online. They struck a deal with Global Sports Interactive. This would help them create a website and e-commerce store. Throughout the early 2000s, MC Sports would continue to struggle. They would jockey back and forth between closing underperforming locations and opening new ones in a new market. In 2001, they had 64 locations. Even with all their struggles, they would look to get back on track in the mid-2000s. They would do what other retailers did around that same time. With the 2008 recession, many retailers went out of business, leaving several unleased and abandoned buildings, and MC Sports would look to start buying them up. By the end of 2008, they would be up to 76 locations. However, this would turn out to be detrimental. With the purchase of all these new buildings, they went into considerable debt. Along with that, the economy, well, it just wasn't good at that time, and their sales started to decline. This downtrend would just continue throughout the next several years, and by 2016, they were looking for new ways to bring in money. I do have to give them credit. They tried a different approach than many other companies. Instead of closing stores, they would look to open new ones in different markets. This way, they thought they could bring in more sales. But they didn't stop at that. They would also undergo renovations to their older locations. Of course, this would take them just further and further into debt, and it really burnt their available capital. And by the end of 2016, they were in serious financial trouble. They would make a last-ditch effort to try to sell off their less profitable stores. However, this just wouldn't be enough. In February of 2017, they would file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. They had hopes of restructuring, but just after a few months, it was clear they would be unable to continue. Their bankruptcy would be converted to Chapter 7, and all remaining 68 locations would be liquidated and closed by the end of June 2017. Tonight, after 70 years as a West Michigan retail staple, MC Sports has declared bankruptcy. That's right. What this means for the customers and employees is still unclear, but Barton Dieters is here to tell us what to expect next. Barton? Well, opening in Grand Rapids in 1946, they were selling World War II surplus in addition to fishing, hunting, and outdoor sporting goods. MC would grow to include more than 70 stores in seven states throughout the Midwest, but now that legacy is in jeopardy. This was an excellent company, and it was sad to see them go. I remember MC Sports quite well, as we had one in our hometown. Even despite the intense competition, I still think they had room to be successful. I think it just came down to overexpanding at the wrong time. I mean, they weren't the only ones to do this. The mid-2000s was just a tough time for retailers, and unfortunately, many of them never survived. Nowadays, I do still visit the old MC Sports store once a year. As, as you might expect, it's now a uh, Spirit Halloween. Anyway guys, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you found this interesting, and thank you so much for your support, and I really want to try to get back on track and make some more videos. So if you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, let me know about that in the comments, and I will see you all next time.